Hello and welcome to Giga Jam. My name is Natalie Barris and this man here hiding behind the drum kit is Brian Green. Hello, Brian. Hello, Natalie. How are you? Very well, thank you. You? I'm fine. I was going to say, whoa now. I don't want to ask you any more questions at the moment. Okay. I want to ask you a question. I want to ask you, do you feel like a bit of an animal? A bit grrr? Do you have like the crazy red hair? Do you sit down and you want to hit things? I'm talking animal, obviously, from the of Muppet course, show. Yes, yeah. uh, if, like me, you have the uncontrollable urge to drum, but you just can't rein it in, you don't really know which direction to turn, don't panic, because we're here to help you, aren't we? We are. We've got the Essential Drum Skills course, part one. Correct. Which will consist of ten episodes. Correct. That we will show them the way. Yes. The question I want to ask you, first of all. Absolutely. And I'm sure it's a question you guys want to ask as well. What is Giga Jam? Well, Giga Jam is a structured pathway of courses mm -hmm. for not just the drums, but guitar, bass and keyboards as well, Right. which will enable students to attain grades as they develop through the lessons. I like it. Great. I like it a lot. But let's not talk about Giga Jam in its essence yeah. and how it works okay. right now. Let's talk about these beasts in front of us. Right. What do I need to be a drummer? <laughs> This stuff. Yes, this stuff. You need to, you need some drums of some description of varying cost. Mm -hmm. We've got here assembled so that we can compare uh, and look at the similarities and differences between electronic kits, as we have here, mm -hmm. uh, tabletop electronic kits. But I think we'll, I'd like to start, if possible, with the acoustic drum kit. I'll let you, Brian. You're very kind. The standard acoustic drum kit, which I think will be familiar to most people. Mm -hmm. So what we've got that makes up the um, the uh, acoustic drum kit is the snare drum, which is probably at the centre of it all. Um, sounds a little bit like this when played in a military style. Mm -hmm. uh, quite often just given a good thump <laughs> in rock and roll style. <laughs> it makes a very distinct noise and it has a very distinct role. In it's very rattly, isn't it? It is. Because of these rattles, Natalie. <laughs> these are called snares, mm -hmm. which are... Uh, across the bottom of the uh, snare drum head and they rattle in resonance with this bottom head when the top head is struck. Right. So they rattle there. Take the lever off. There are occasions when that's cool. And you get more of a tom sound. Mm. So that's the snare drum which we use a lot in contemporary drumming. Um, and then we've got other drums that we hit with our hands which I'd like to explore. Mm -hmm. or with the sticks in this particular <laughs> instance. You can use your hands. Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, high tom. High tom. High tom. Nice sound. Then the mid tom. Then the low tom. Now, like so many things in the essential course, uh, is the names are, are logical absolutely yeah high mid low in terms of its pitch and also in terms of the way it's laid out in the kit in front of you got you um sometimes these are called rack toms or mounted toms uh, this is also often referred to as a floor tom because it sits on the floor on stands simple simple obvious correct <laughs> Sometimes it's also a hanging tom, so it behaves similar to this and it hangs off a cymbal stand. I see. Because they've got different names, throughout the course, I will try to refer consistently to them as high, mid and low. Good, I'll be watching out for that. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. so, so we've uh, covered the, the drums that we play with our sticks in our hands. Now I want to have a look at the bass drum. The bass drum lies flat on the floor and is played using our foot using a pedal mm -hmm. okay and uh, we play the the bass drum by striking the pedal mm -hmm. with our foot in a variety of different ways um, if you're playing more softly perhaps more traditionally you would use uh, a flat foot technique because your foot is flat on the floor again simple there you go voila generally for lower dynamics used a lot in jazz playing mm -hmm. softer pop and rock tunes if you want to get a bit more va va voom out of it heavy large as we say in the green household <laughs> then you're going to use more of a leg stroke yeah you start with your foot flat on the floor mm -hmm. and it remains so when you're not playing so that you're nice and relaxed in your posture but when you beef it <laughs> you large it you large it you use your leg you're stamping it down absolutely it's All right. a stamp motion those are the drums great spinny gold disc things Symbols. Those things. Correct. Uh, we have a number here. We have uh, a crash symbol. Because it makes a crashy sort of sound. Mm -hmm. I have a second one here just for a, a dynamic change. 
Then we've also got a ride cymbal. It has a totally different job. You don't crash it, you ride it. Now, you ride it playing a pattern. Right. Now, the ride cymbal is, is where you play patterns on a cymbal. Where we play most of our riding is here. What's that? What's that? These are called hi-hats. Yes. You have two cymbals, one on top of the other, which are operated by striking... A uh, pretty ugly noise. Yeah, I'm not liking that. OK. But it's also operated using a foot pedal. The top symbol is attached to your, your foot uh, through, uh, through the centre of the hi-hat, mm -hmm. and that enables it to draw the top symbol down onto the bottom. Okay. So you've got a variety of effect, uh, effects there. Quite tight for pop music. A bit more open, which you adjust with the front of your foot. Mm -hmm. um, Wide open and combinations of open and close. So much. So much. So much we can do. Absolutely. Now we've got the acoustic kit here, mm -hmm. which is a standard setup. I want to introduce the electronic setup, which actually just mimics exactly what's going on here. So this is an acoustic drum kit. Yes. This is an electronic drum kit. Right. Okay, so it's sort of a full drum kit. So just go through all of the drums. In the sure. <laughs> sort of trying to copy the ones that I've, I've told you about. So what about the snare drum to start with? OK, the snare one, the, the main one. Yeah. OK. And then your toms. High tom. Yeah. Mid tom. Correct. Low tom. Spot on. Great. Then you've got the bass drum on the floor. There is nothing there. Ah, there's a little pad there. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the pedal is a bit upside down, but I particularly like this model. It works really well. It's the same principle, but it's just like hitting the middle of a bass drum, but obviously a lot, a lot more portable. Mm -hmm. So just give that a smash there. OK, foot flat on it, flat foot. Absolutely, up to you. Yeah, nice. So you can see how that works. Similar action, same technique, no changes. Mm -hmm. uh, then symbol-wise, okay. we've got the crash symbol. That's brilliant. And we've got the ride symbol here. Fab. And then you've got your hi-hat. Where? Well, your hi-hat is somewhat disguised on the electronic kit, causes a few problems, so that's why I wanted to talk about it specifically mm -hmm. today, is that it's, it looks like an ordinary pad, yet the sound, ah, okay. if you play it... Yeah, there's your hi-hat. And again, you get the same kind of velocity control that you have on, on the... Uh, on the standard velocity control Absolutely. I read it in the manual <laughs> the velocity control by using your foot pedal again oh, which I is see. on the floor so again it's it's identical to a normal kit all right so this is it without me sort of pushing it great this is me semi pushing it yep and that's full nice to the floor yeah nice nice tight close sound so you've got all the variety that you would have on this kit mm -hmm. now similarly not everybody's got room, yes. or perhaps even the money for one of those. Before you go on to that, hmm. I thought you were going to say symbolally. 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 I'm hitting these symbols. Yeah. They're not metal, though, are they? I mean, this is... No, they're rubber, plastic sort of thing. <laughs> we won't get too technical. No, but they, the, the beauty of those pads is that if you plug some headphones in, you cause no disturbance in the house ah. to your neighbours. So where you would have an acoustic kit, fabulous and ideal... Um, most professional players will have an acoustic kit and an electronic kit. Not always possible in terms of budgets. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have trouble with neighbours or you haven't got enough room in your dining room or your bedroom, then you're going to be looking for something else, something a bit smaller, which mm -hmm. might be the electronic kit. Or even smaller. Or even smaller is this fabulous device, which you know I personally think is, is, is wonderful for mm -hmm. learning on uh, because it makes actually being able to play the drums possible and accessible for people who perhaps otherwise think... You know, I can't have this, yes. uh, or it's all too expensive. Well, you can carry this big. around with you, put it on your dining room table, on your desk. Absolutely. On your bed. On your bed, Whatever. anywhere. I mean, with a, if you adapt it with a snare drum stand, it's in incredibly portable. And as we'll talk about uh, in another time, it, it works with our software. Mm -hmm. But the great thing with this is that it's a drum kit in a pad. Yeah. You've got the pedals here on the floor. Goodness, I didn't notice that, yes. So you've got your bass drum. You can use the same actions. Mm -hmm. as, as I demonstrated earlier. So stamping it down or just being quite regular and soft? Stamping or leg technique as I prefer to refer it to. But <laughs> Let's go easy on that. You choose your way, I'll choose mine. Absolutely. And then the hi-hat pedal. And we've got the same drums. <coughs> Snare. T high tom. Mid. Low tom. Right cymbal. And crash cymbal. 
Then we've got our hi-hat, which is catches a few people out. It's in the middle here, but provides no technical problems for right. people, so they can get around the kit quite easily. That sound. If I closed my eyes, I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference between that. It's, it's amazing, considering this is so portable and so small. Yeah. Um, circa 150 pounds so it, it you know that whole thing about making music tuition accessible this really helps yeah and it's so much quieter <laughs> so much quieter again you use uh, headphones as you would do with the electronic kit mm -hmm. um, and it, you know in an ideal world you'd have you know one of each um, so you'd have an acoustic kit and some form of electronic kit oh, so right. that you could practice late at night or perhaps when the neighbors come home um, and in terms of storage space these are fantastic in schools yeah. You know, you could get 30 of these in a classroom and put them on tabletops as they do in keyboard labs at the moment. Um, and if, you know, if you're, if you're struggling for room at home. It's fantastic. Uh, there you go. All right. Well, we've looked at the drums, yes. so I suppose we should look at the software. Absolutely. But let's give ourselves a little mental break between that. Okay. And of course, give you a little break because now we're going to a little break. Do you see what I'm doing It's there? a beautiful segue. Thank you. All right, guys, join us back in part two. Hello, welcome back to part two with me, Natalie Barris, and him over there, Brian Green. Hi there. <laughs> Thank you. That's all right. Before the break, yeah. um, we we're exploring all the drum kits around us. We were. But we didn't really talk too much about these things behind us. Yes, absolutely. The computer mm -hmm. and its connection with our electronic drum kits and how GigaJam uses interactive learning and e-assessment mm -hmm. to assist... E-assessment? E-assessment. E-assessment? What does that mean? Well, it's electronic assessment, analysis, by capturing um, performances into the computer. Mm -hmm. you, you said it was a, a structured pathway that we're on. Yes, absolutely. Explain the structure. Okay. So GigaJam is, is about, uh, as I say, the structured pathways of courses for drums, keyboards bass and guitar and what happens is at each lesson each level even um, the lessons work synergistically amongst them so that you can play with other members of your band so you're all learning at roughly the same rate mm -hmm. uh, at the end of a part or a level you have the opportunity to to play a band piece where you can attain a grade how does one attain a grade well you can do it by recording your performance with your your tutor mm -hmm. um, or you can have uh, an analysis of your performance that you can email into us uh, what you also have to do is complete a theory assessment book so it uh, gives you a, a full grounding of all the information you need to have attained that grade fantastic what grade are you on yeah can we move on <laughs> all right moving on then so yes. we've got the computer we have obviously the software's on there yes it is What's the first kind of thing that you need to do? Well, I think the, th the thing that you need to do is, is to understand that the lessons are written in a very structured learning model way. And the whole idea is, is we take every single step. So there's, there's no black holes of learning, as we refer to it. <laughs> so you're not going to fall down a, a big hole of, I, I don't understand that. How did I get here? The whole idea is that everything is explained and every single exercise and every lesson moves on from where the left, last one left off. Right, so you're not, so you're just going boom, 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 not yep. boom, boom, ah. No boom. R in it. So okay. it's a straightforward path. <laughs> what might happen? No corners? No corners. What may happen sometimes when you're learning is that just, just through enthusiasm, you, you're, you've started with a few basics, uh, or even this happens to advanced players, you're on a, you're on a path of learning, mm -hmm. and then you get sidetracked because you, know, you love music and you think, well, you may say something to your tutor like, well, what about what happens in this record? Yeah. Tutor gets excited because they want to explain it to you, which is great, and they start talking about it. Before you know it, a few weeks later, you're off on this journey in this direction. On a Tommy tangent. It could be described as such. Mm -hmm. Then what happens is the tutor remembers, or you remember, that you were trying to do something a few weeks back. So you come back, but actually where the path has taken you, you've gone over here, you come back in at a higher level, but you've got this gap mm -hmm. which you haven't been through. Now, that's what the essential skills courses are all about, is making sure that there are no gaps in your learning and it's a straightforward step-by-step -step pathway. Okay, so on the TV, we're mimicking almost what's going on on your software, on your computer. Yeah, I mean, it's a different medium, of course, isn't it, television? So the whole idea is that students can't interact with the programme in the way that 
uh, the television program rather than you can if you've got the software in front of you but the idea of the of the television program is to give you know some explanation uh, and also to support the learning um, and perhaps you know even in introduce you to to what Giga Jam is all about all right let's get interactive good enough talking let's start interacting well quite right so the lessons are based uh, on a, a, a relatively simple learning model where we introduce a little bit of knowledge get the students understanding and straight to application the key thing is that people don't want to learn to play they want to be able to play very true okay so the lessons are, are, are written in such a way that we have uh, clear objectives for each lesson mm -hmm. and then each section has a little bit of text which is then supported with multimedia um, exercises. I'm excited now. Multimedia. Yeah, multimedia. So we've got some video clips and we've got some play along support software. Two things. When you leave your, 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 your teacher's studio, the house, um, quite often this has happened to me. I've said to a student, oh, how did you get on with your practice? And they will say to me, yeah, I did this bit, but I forgot about that. You know, the bit that you really wanted them to get their teeth into, mm -hmm. they kind of forgot what was going on. So what, we, what, what I've done with this program and the software and the whole concept is to say, well, look, quite a lot of the time, students will spend half an hour, an hour at most with their teacher. The rest of the time, Wild West. They're, They're on their own. Correct. This is a way of supporting them. So the videos is a great way of actually sort of bringing the tutor, you know, heaven forbid, somebody as scary as me, into their house. So they've got them there all the time. Mm -hmm. And what we've got here is, you know, an example of, of my foot. And, uh, and what a fine foot it is, You're Brian. very kind. Playing an exercise. So if you have forgotten what the exercise is about, you've got a, a media aid memoir to remind you of what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Now, as you go through the lessons, you have video clips that support every single exercise. Mm -hmm. There are also some additional video clips that, that show some more of the technical uh, aspects of playing uh, for whatever instrument mm -hmm. in more detail. I mean, this is more interesting, isn't it, than just picking up a book from the library and just ploughing through it. Well, it makes it, it, it's effectively like uh, an interactive book, yeah? So, you know, where you have a book, yet you want to actually see some more, mm -hmm. um, it enables you to do so. So you go through the pages and then click a button and up comes a video. Now, what's really important is once you've gleaned your understanding, so you've got a bit of knowledge, you've gleaned your understanding, the key thing is student practising. You know, just forget it. If you're not going to practice, you're not going to get any better. So it's very lonely practicing on your own. So we've built extract what's called extractor software for each of the courses, which extracts your, your track so you can play along with it. Mm -hmm. So if we take, for example, one of the last exercises in lesson one, just purely as an example, what you've got here is a band track. So you can play along your, uh, your, uh, what you've learnt in the lesson along with a band. Right, so when you, mean, when you say band track, what sort of instruments have we got in this band? Well, we've got bass, keyboards, um, a little bit of guitar going on, and of course drum kit. Uh, let me play a little bit for you. Why don't you? Well, I'm going to. <laughs> so here it is, four clicks to come in. Yep. Then a very simple, uncomplicated backing track, so it doesn't confuse you. Quite a nice pace as well. Well, yeah, absolutely. Now the whole idea is that you can control the track by muting it, getting whatever sounds you want. You can even lose the drum track so you can play on your own. You can also change the pace as you, ah. get, as you get better and better. You can't do that on a CD or a tape, can you? Well, you can't, so it actually makes it interactive because you're controlling it. Mm -hmm. Now, the idea is that you play along with that over and over and over and get better. Now, what you can also do if you've got an electronic drum kit is that you can actually record your performance in, and I'll demonstrate that for you. Please do. Record button. Oh, that's quick. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so, so I shouldn't distract you by talking to you, should I, really? Just point? don't ask me to talk is All the right. key. Okay. So I'll just play a sample of the exercise. I'll make... Yeah. That's me normally playing. You're very good. Thank you very much. So we've stopped that not at the end? No, we haven't. Does that matter? No, we'll only get an analysis, though, of what we've, what we've recorded. So my... My score, which I will now get by pressing the analyzer button. How, d how do you get your analysis? Hang well, on. it's recorded into the computer. Yeah. So I've now recorded it into my extractor. By pressing the A button, the Giga Jam analyzer button, it actually compares what I've recorded against what I should have recorded. So here it comes up on the screen. That's quite simple. Well, that's the idea. <laughs> and what it does is show graphically, it compares 
your performance. I've got green for, for good here on these first few shaky notes. Yeah. But most of them are black. Be fair. That's so quite good. Not bad. And where you go horribly wrong, it gives you a colour. Ah. But what it also does is, is actually show the note in relationship to the position of these thin lines so you can tell whether you're behind the beat or ahead of the beat. All right, so where is the notes that you play? They're the ones in colour, the varying different colours on the sort of octaves. On the stave, stave sorry. Yeah, on the musical stave, that's right. What you can do is you compare the lesson here. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect file. And this is the performance. My performance, slightly less than perfect, mm -hmm. but a good attempt. And it compares every single note against the ones that should have been played yeah. and the ones that you did play. So you're just seeing exactly where, you, exactly where you've gone wrong, not kind of guessing. No. Yeah. The other thing is, of course, is that you know, we're looking at the analysis. What you can also do, in, and this is very, very important, is to listen to your performance. So if I go back to the extractor here, uh, take out, uh, mute the... Uh, performance that was already in there and li let's now listen to what I just played listening out for evenness yep. timing um, <laughs> you know passages where you go uh, go a bit awry inconsistency in the balance of your sounds all those kinds of things you know when you're learning you need to be using your ears to hear what you've performed using your eyes to see what you've done mm -hmm. um, and you need to be using how it also feels are you becoming increasingly more comfortable through repetition mm -hmm. so using those three of the five senses that we have available is incredibly important yeah. I mean, the great thing about being able to use computers is that it, it enables to provide you know multi-sensorial uh, education so mm -hmm. that you can watch uh, the videos if that's that's your main way of, of taking in information you can read the text if you're more in, involved in the words and wanting to understand how that goes on you can use your um, aud aud auditory skills <laughs> even if you can't say them you can use your auditory skills <laughs> yeah. to hear what's going on as well and interpret your performance and also you're seeing a progression, aren't you? Because you've yes. got these things saved and yeah. then you can really, you get your percentage. Yes. You can see your progression going up and up Correct. and up, hopefully. Hopefully. Fingers it should crossed. do if you practice. There's no doubt about that. Just quickly. Yes. Is Giga Jam taking the place of the teacher? No. Will teachers be redundant? No, never. I mean, it, it's a support tool. You could never replace a, a, a teacher. It's impossible to do so. It has only ever been designed as a support tool. Yes, if you haven't got a good local teacher, this is great. Mm -hmm. But ideally... A great teacher is the best thing that you could possibly have. Brian, I couldn't have put it better myself. Thank you for coming in today and giving us an introduction to Giga Jam. The fun does not stop here, though. Oh, no, join us for part one of our Essential Drum Skills course. See you then.